Uh, today is uh, October 30th, 2001. We're interviewing Mr. Frank A. Pellegrino at the Niagara Falls Armory. Michael Akey, interviewer, Wayne Clark, videographer. Mr. Pellegrino, where were you born, sir? I was born in Niagara Falls, New York. Niagara Falls. Oh, you're native of Niagara Falls? Right. Oh. She's not. She's a foreigner. Uh-oh. <laughs> so you grew up in Niagara Falls? Oh, yes. Went to school here? Went to schools, St. Joseph's and South Junior and Trot. Mm -hmm. I dropped out a year before that because I had to go to work with depression days. Ah, yes. And uh, it was more important to survive than the education. Right. Today it's the opposite. Right. Where did you, where did you work? I, uh, I retired from uh, New York State Park Commission here at the Falls. Oh, okay. Very nice. Nineteen and a half years ago. My goodness. Now, um, you went up, uh, let's see, you went to work, uh, you, you quit, was you, were you in high school? I was in the top location high school, yeah. Okay, and you decided, uh, you know, the family needed the money. Right. Okay. We had to. Uh, now, come uh, 1940, you decided to enlist in October? October 9th. Why Why did you decide to enlist? Since nine years old, I wanted to be a soldier, and I don't know what motivated me. Uh-huh. I, I always did for the time of nine years old. Mm-hmm. So you enlisted in Niagara Falls? In, in Niagara Falls. And I missed them at uh, Fort Niagara here, that 2850. Mm -hmm. And I had to catch up with them in South Carolina. Okay. That's when they were building the barracks there. Oh. You weren't in the National Guard prior to no, going? No, no, I was a regular Army. Regular Army. Yeah. All right, so uh, they shipped you off to South Carolina. Uh, that's where I volunteered to go, because I had the chance to go to Panama. Okay. And I took uh, South Carolina. You did your basic in South Carolina? Yes. Uh, at uh, what, Fort Jackson? Fort Jackson, South Carolina. What was that like? Well, it was sand, cold and hot, <laughs> and, uh, well, let's see, we still had the, uh, we still had the horse cavalry. Okay. I think it was the third cavalry, mm -hmm. uh, right across the road, and on the other side was the 34th Infantry Division. I have a a photo of that white in my outfit. Oh, nice. And uh, I was just green, 18-year-old kid. What, uh, now what unit were you in? 28th to be, that's the one I started in. Right, what regiment was it? Uh, <laughs> that's okay, 28th Infantry Division. Yeah. Um, Company, Company M. South Carolina was a little different than uh, Niagara Falls. A lot different. Why? How so? Well, it was all sandy, and when it was hot, it was hot. How were the people? The people, even though they had signs on the lawn saying, soldiers and dogs keep out the grass, <laughs> they treated me pretty good. Good, good. Uh, what was, uh, so this is really your first time away from home? That was, yes. Yeah. So uh, did you get homesick at all? I sure did. But you had a lot of company. For three days, they didn't even know I was there. Really? And we were in squad tents. We froze at night and fried in the daytime. Mm -hmm. And we used to go uh, hiking through the woods at night and come back. And the band would pick up the music. We'd get in step and we weren't tired anymore. Interesting. Uh, and uh, that rejuvenated you? Oh, yeah. The military music always did. I, I, I always loved it. So you got through basic pretty well? Oh yeah, there's nothing to it to me because I was physically fit. Mm -hmm. I used to go to the boys club when we first started here on the east side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was, I was on the athletic type the short time I was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that uh, boys club, that was originally a hardware store. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. The, uh, now, after basic, what happened? At, well, at the basic, I was there, let's see, uh, eight, eight or ten months, something like that. And uh, you never volunteer in the Army, but I did. There were ten people from each company, mm -hmm. each outfit, to volunteer to go to Fort Hampton, New York. And I said, oh boy, that's closer to home. So we went, and when we were there, 
we were like prisoners, and they, were, they exchanged our clothes three or four times from winter to summer to winter. Maybe they throw us off where we were going. We didn't know where we were going. Hmm. We had no idea. Uh, so we sneaked up out of there with a pass. We, we used it over and over again at the other end of the fence. <laughs> we wound up in Coney Island in the morning in the sand, sand all over us. And this little restaurant owner, I guess he's a Greek, he says, come on, wash up over in my place. He says, I'll feed you. Hmm. And he did. Hmm. Maybe he knew something was coming and we didn't. We were kids. We, right. we were thinking about war, you know. So uh, we got back on the ship, and uh, I guess my captain was going to do everything but hang us. But uh, little did we know he was full of it, because when we went on the boat, get this, it was a wooden boat. Mm -hmm. And it was called the American Legion, one of Admiral Byrd's uh, boats on one of his Antarctic expeditions. Oh, really? Yeah. So we got on there and we stayed there a couple of days. Couldn't go anywhere. Finally, we set sail. I guess it was at night. And uh, in the middle of the ocean the next day, we uh, the captain opened up the sealed orders. We had to be on deck all mm -hmm. We're going to Reykjavik, Iceland. Ah. <laughs> 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 so, a long way from home. <laughs> yeah, I spent 20 lousy, 29 lousy months there. Now what were you, you still didn't know what you were going to do? No. No. Uh, well, when we got there we found out. We were, they made stevedores out of us overnight, unloading ships left and right mm -hmm. as fast as we could. And we had any extra time, it'd be guard duty. But there was no such thing as recreation. It was a really bad place. I. I wouldn't want to go there again. So there wasn't much to do in Reykjavik? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Matter of fact, their folks there, they were a little behind at the time, even though they had a modern university. Mm -hmm. They were a little behind. They really went after the girls if any of those girls looked at us. Mm -hmm. All really old fashioned, beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. They're Nordic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a 99 year lease on that base from that time on. And uh, from there we went to England. I was there eight months. My, my outfit, uh, my platoon I should say, was building barges with the English. Mm -hmm. And never volunteer, right? I did again, but this time I was lucky too. I uh, was painting signs, and you know the directions where to go to these air raid shelters? Mm -hmm. I, I had to just paint over the old markings there and all mm -hmm. that. I had it made and, uh, for eight months. And the guys come home all greased up and I'd be all dressed up, ready to go to the pubs. There's two pubs we used to go to all the time. So. And uh, from there we went to France, or well, I was another another place besides London. I was in Falmouth and Plymouth. Mm -hmm. How were the English people? Southampton. Well, they liked us, but they resented us. They were jealous, like all Europeans. They think we're all rich people, and they, they resent us. Uh -huh. I said, if some of us are, it's because we worked hard for it. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody gave it to us. Yeah. But we're not all rich. We're working people like you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the girls, they complained that their men weren't like we were, aggressive. They wanted the man to be aggressive. They had to be aggressive, because they're men were more timid like. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Falmouth was where we sailed from to France. Mm -hmm. I was there four months guarding prisoners. What was that like? Well, you're out in the field all the time. And no such thing as a home like in England. I, we were in a home. Mm -hmm. See, the uh, first and second floor civilians, first and second floor us. That's the way it was in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, but in, in France we lived in uh, pup tents, mm -hmm. and we had uh, well the prisoners had it better than we did, hmm. eating and everything. And uh, these we, are German prisoners. We had German, and believe it or not, our own allies, the Russians. Uh, we had some of them. I don't know if they volunteered to work, uh, to fight for the Germans mm -hmm. or if they're forced to or what. But we had some of them. We had six Turks. Hmm. 
and six Italians. All of them were cooks, uh -huh. and they were eating better than we were. We had a lot of key ration. <laughs> hmm. Did um, the prisoners pretty well behave themselves? They had to. Uh, there was, we had just one SS trooper, and we wanted him to escape so we could shoot him. And uh, he was too wise. He says, why well, should I go? He says, you shoot me. He says, besides, I like it here. It's safe here. Look, you couldn't get out. But uh, we pulled our regular turn, you know. Mm -hmm. and so after four months, we went back to England and put me on a hospital boat. And we came home. And the best picture uh, was the Statue of Liberty. Mm. But that looked pretty good to you after all that time. Sure it is. What were um, what were your platoon mates like? Guys that were in your platoon? All young fellas except the, we had World War One veteran sergeants and all that. Mm -hmm. Some they still had scars from most of their gas from the World War One. Oh. And Sergeant Morris, I remember one of them. Pretty good group of guys? Oh yeah. Okay. Good guys, tough guys, drinkers, we all drank. Do you have any problems being Italian? Well, it was, maybe it's by some of the southerners. And uh, so we used to make fun out of them too. See. Mm -hmm. got so you got even with them? Hay seeds and all that <laughs> stuff. You know, we put sugar in their, in their bed, you know. And they got nail the shoes down on the floor. You had a pretty good time. Oh yeah, I, I enjoyed it, man. I was 18 hours and right, just at the right age, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing for me to carry the receiver of a 50 caliber machine gun on my back all the way up the mountain. Really? Before 34 infantry did. What were your uh, officers like? They were good. They were distant. They had to be. You know, they were not supposed to mix, you know. Yeah. But they were they were pretty good. They were pretty fair. Uh, we had one that was a screwball in Iceland, Captain Rivers. He, he tried, he even, <laughs> in the Army at that time, unheard of, a beard and mustache. He was, he was trying to get a Section 8. Hmm. Uh, and he was a captain. Uh, so then we got somebody from the States to replace him. And it was a regular Army man. Mm -hmm. And everybody told the mark then. <laughs> we had to teach the draftees uh -huh. what we were told to teach them. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, some of them were pretty green, you know. They were from, they've been behind the desk all their life, or right. they have uh, did some light work, you know, some did heavy work. Uh, all walks of life, and they didn't have much time, you know. They were drafted, they didn't have much time like I did. Uh -huh. Were um, the draftees uh, treated differently than the guys that enlisted? I think uh, they got treated a little better. Really? Yeah. Even when it came to the ranking. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. They said, well, they're only here for a while. He said, you guys are going to be here for 20 years, 30 years. 30 years, it was that? 30 years. And we didn't, some of us didn't intend to stay that long. <coughs> uh, there was no integration mm -hmm. at the time. We didn't have any problems. There were blacks in their own outfits. Mm -hmm. Most were truck drivers. Mm -hmm. And one time we, we had our, we pitched our tents by a river, mm -hmm. and we wanted to do our duty. See, when we came back, somebody had stolen different things like cars and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, right away the southern guy says, "I know who did it." So we went over there and we busted the whole, all their pup tents, we busted it all up, they weren't there. And the next morning they weren't there, hmm. they were gone. But I mean, we didn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I read, hmm. all kinds of problems. The, um, must have been, you were in Iceland 20 months? 29. 29 months. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that get to you after a while? It's everybody. How did how do you cope with uh, being able to do absolutely next to nothing for all that 
Well, you didn't have time to do anything else. So by the time you get through uh, doing eight to maybe ten hours mm -hmm. unloading boats, you were bushed. Mm -hmm. And then if there was a time you did eight hours, but it was always four hours of guard duty. Oh. And then you'd go to your barracks. And the Southerns, I, I'll say one thing about them. They knew how to make Raisin Jack. <laughs> and we were drunk on that. And they couldn't find it. It was under the floor. Oh, so you had a still underneath the floor. And, it, and uh, we made sure it was under where this pot belly stove was. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that place there, uh, the roads that we made, we had to keep putting the uh, volcanic ashes, cinders, I mm -hmm. should say, on there and go over it with the big trucks mm -hmm. to flatten it down because it just kept on going down all the time. <laughs> right by the uh, water there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I uh, what's the name of it? Uh, I just mentioned the capital of Iceland. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. That was supposed to be the capital. Of it. Well, only one time they called it recreation. We got in the trucks, went to the other end of the island where they have geysers. Oh. And they have a greenhouse there. Mm -hmm. Get their steam, heat, and water right mm -hmm. from there. See. And they used to say you put 100 pounds of GI soap in there, you could start it up yourself. One of those guys, I don't know if that's true or not, <laughs> but we never did. 100 pounds of soap was 100 pounds of soap. Mm -hmm. And uh, we unloaded uh, supplies, uh, ammunition, food, everything. And when it was liquor for the officers, we used to make sure we damaged it so we could uh, put it in a dump. The dump was right near our camp. <laughs> we go over and take it. You know. You're pretty enterprising guys. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, we were little devils. Young guys, but... Uh, you still keep in touch with any of these fellows? No. Uh, in the beginning, I did. Then they got married, and they were from other states. Mm -hmm. we, we never did get together. And one time I got a call from Sergeant Sweet. I remember him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't that close in a, in a service, but because he was from, I don't know, Maine or someplace, and he's coming this way, I got a call from him. Uh, but that was it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two there are two other guys, I don't even know if they're living or not. Uh, they were my outfit from Niagara Falls. Oh, really? Uh, Connor, I forget his first name, he went to school with me. And I was surprised he was in the army, he got in the army because he didn't seem like he was, you know, mm -hmm. that intelligent. But he got in. And then one day I was downtown when we had downtown here, and I ran into him. He was still in the service. Really? Yeah, I guess he's going to make a career of it. I haven't huh. seen him since. The other one, Nowacki, is a Polish kid from the east side I was raised with. Mm -hmm. And I met him uh, after we were out. Uh, he wasn't in my office very long because he went somewhere else. And uh, Connor went to A Company and I was in B Company. Mm -hmm. So. I was surprised to see somebody from my town mm -hmm. in my own outfit out there of all hmm. places. Hmm. Uh, well, I got a disability, or maybe I would have stayed, you know. Mm -hmm. And even now, when this thing happened, I, I said to my wife, I said, by golly, I says, uh, I'd like to go if I was not my age, but my Disability. You see, I got a heart problem, mm -hmm. and, and I'm a diabetic. Otherwise, I'm I feel okay. But uh, I'm 79 now. I I just had that feeling that I want to go. Mm -hmm. hmm. So uh, <coughs> now, when did uh, when did you come back to the states? Uh, was it uh, early 45? January 26. Okay. 45. All right. You were discharged. From Brentwood, Long Island. Okay. Hospital. And I came home. And uh, it was hard getting a job because I, it was hard for me to understand why I was never home during the war. Mm -hmm. But I heard they uh, took housewives, everybody 
because they needed them for the factories. Mm -hmm. So I got a job at the cover and I couldn't stand the damn noise. My father and my brother John had been working there. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't stand the noise, I had to leave. Mm -hmm. So I had gotten a paper mill, the old paper mill. I was born on 12th Street at the end of that paper, before you get to the paper mill, that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. when it was nice there in those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this guy, the foreman was a nice guy. He says, well, so-and-so, he'll show you in a minute, just hang around, you know. And I hung around, hung around, always showed up. I hollered about it, you know, and, and these guys are doing peace work. Hmm. They don't want to let go of that, see. I was there a couple of months doing nothing and getting paid for it. Hmm. This is nothing. I said, this just can't be. I went to the boss, I said, I'm leaving. I said, I know you're trying to be nice to me. I said, but I, I'm leaving. I said, I got to find something meaningful. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. I even worked for the city of Niagara Falls on a garbage truck uh, when you didn't have these lifts. <laughs> this was the lifts, you know. Ashes, Ooh. coal ashes. Uh, but uh, it was nice people to work for and with. Mm -hmm. But there was no future. Yeah. So I went to the VA administration. There was a Mr. Case there. I told him my situation. He said, how'd you like to go to Mount McGregor? I said, where the hell is that? He says, it's on a little mountain near Saratoga Springs, Veterans Place. It's not run by Uncle Sam, it's run by New York State. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Governor Dewey for that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was 1949. So I says, all right. He, he explained that uh, any veteran of any war, male, female, whatever, is entitled 90 days a year up there. It doesn't cost you a thing, not even transportation. Where could I go wrong? So I said, okay. I went up there and boy, I loved it. That place was made from the stone right from that mountain uh -huh. by Italian masons that were imported from Italy just to do that work, 1914, 19 something. And today it looks new as it did then. And uh, I want to stay there so bad. So the guy says, why don't you get a job? I said, how am I going to get a job? Go to Antony. Tell them what you want. I want an outdoor work, you know, uh -huh. I build myself up good. And uh, I said, well, we don't have any openings. And there probably won't be any openings. These are regular uh -huh. employees, you know. He says, but there's an opening in a dining room. A dining room? See, you know where you eat? Holy mac, that thing is half as big as a football field. <laughs> well, I got the job. And I was in charge after four months, and I never knew a thing about dining room stuff then. And I had good boss, I had good people to work with. Uh, so I was up there 10 years, got married. My wife got pregnant, so we couldn't live on the grounds. She mm -hmm. was supposed to live on the grounds. So we went back to Oneonta, New York, where she came from, and I got a job in a factory there for almost two years. Non-union, dollar ten cents an hour. You mentioned union, you're out, and I, I had no choice. Yeah, I stayed there two years. Then the baby died at birth. Then her mother died. I huh. still had my mother here, so I, we decided we moved back here. That was 1961, and I've been here ever since. But she died. My present wife over there. Uh huh. And. Uh, I attended bar. I didn't know anything about bar. I went well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before that, I couldn't find anywhere, a job anywhere. And she was working in Grantos restaurant in downtown. And so that one summer, I went over there and I dishwashed for a few months. Went home, still out of work. I go all over looking. Hmm. Uh, my late wife even came with me on her days off. Couldn't find a job anywhere. My age is against me. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. So uh, the guy in the two doors down was a competitor of this Mr. Grant, though. And he thought he was stealing from me from him. He didn't know I was there just for those two months. So I said, I don't know anything about bartending. He said, you don't have to have a teacher. And I didn't ask him what it paid. It paid minimum wage. Dollar and a quarter in 1966. 
I had a ticket. I stayed there a year, and I tried my darndest to get with the state, because I had worked for the state before. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that was broken service at the time. You'd have to start over again, but I didn't care. I wanted a job. So I got a job there, finally, and I treat people, prominent people, signed their name for me. I got in, and before the season was over, they told me it was just for summer. And I said, oh my God, back into the fire again, you know? Mm -hmm. But the guy was gonna either quit or he got fired, I don't know which. And so the foreman went out asking how I was doing. He said, well, the son of a gun, he never stops working. He's always working. He does a good job. I'm just, man, that's, okay, that's the guy. So they asked me if I wanted a city. I said, yeah, sure. And so I got on there, and I did 15 there, and 10 in Mount McGregor. Oh, by the way, uh, my boss kept that to me about right in Albany. They said, they might have changed the law. Maybe you can get those 10 years back, and mm -hmm. I never did, you know, and he kept that to me. He says, what do you want me to do, give you the stamps? He says, write to him. I said, all right. So I wrote. By golly, they changed it. Hmm. I was able, I paid back $2,000 out of that retirement, uh, minus the interest you can keep the interest. And I got my 10 years back and I did 15 here. And I retired uh, March 12, 1982. Hmm. Next March should be 20 years. Mm -hmm. that I've been retired. Mm -hmm. But, um, so you were a busy guy. You well, did, sort did of. a lot of things. I did a lot of drinking, too. <laughs> Chase the women. Uh oh. <laughs> Your wife's here. I said I was, well, I told her about it. I don't, there's nothing I don't tell her. <laughs> now, um, what did you, what did you overall think of your military experience? Well, you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. This one. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't make the same mistake twice. If you're not a, if you're a boy when you go in, you're a man when you come out. Mm -hmm. It'll make a man out of you. If you're one of these guys that's a, a little off your rocker, don't straighten your arm. Then, I don't know about now, mm -hmm. then. And uh, if you were impossible, they didn't keep you. Only after they're sure that you're impossible. They gave you what they call a Section 8, mm -hmm. bad discharge. And uh, then you had a hard time finding a job if you had a bad discharge, in those days anyway. Right. Uh, now anything goes, I guess. <laughs> but you learn a lot. You, uh, you learn to respect authority. Mm -hmm. A lot of young kids don't know what authority is nowadays. You know that as well as I do. But. Uh, they, they taught you a lot of things. And like I tell a lot of these kids today, you can go in today and get an education. Three meals a day. Mm -hmm. A roof over your head. I says, all for free. There's no other government in the world that has this. Mm -hmm. I talked to all these teenagers in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So you thought it was a worthwhile experience for you? Yeah, we, di we didn't have anything uh, given to us. Right. Uh, there w it didn't exist. Now you got you have everything now. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Pellegrino. Sure. That was very good.